Phoebe back with another video and today we're talking video games. One of my all-time favorite games is The Last of Us Part 2 and recently I got the idea to do some drawings from it because this game is so visually pleasing and it's probably one of the most immersive games that I've ever played. The story is beautiful, the art is beautiful, and the gameplay is pretty top tier. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I draw, I really gotta set the mood. So the first thing I did was look up The Last of Us Lo-Fi and shockingly, there was some. Once I had selected a track that was adequately equal parts country twang and dark despair, I set out to look at some concept art for inspiration. Now came the hard part, narrowing down what exactly I wanted to put in this sketchbook spread. Naughty Dog really gave us a lot to eat with this game. I mean, it's a visual feast. In my mind, the safest choice was Ellie and Joel together because they are just a mood when they are together. Um, I'm pretty sure that when they weren't in fear of their lives, they were just vibing like BFFs the whole freaking trip. But you know, there was also like the beautiful cityscapes to consider and of course some of the infected. So I really had a job narrowing it down. The next thing I did was I just sectioned off some little areas that I thought would make like a good composition. I did end up changing it up a little bit in the end because nothing ever goes as planned of course, but in the beginning this seemed like a promising composition. And the first thing I decided to sketch out was Ellie. Would anybody else swipe right on Ellie? No? Just me? It can't be just me. Maybe that's like a weird thing to say about video game characters, but I also used to have a crush on Jack from Jack and Daxter. So like maybe it's just a naughty dog thing. Anyways, let's chat about The Last of Us part two while I continue to sketch all this stuff out. So I understand that a lot of people were not happy with the game and the direction that it went in and the storyline in general. However, I am really not one of those people. This is your one and only warning. I am going to be discussing spoilers because this game is three years old and it's time, okay? So a little bit of background with me in this game. I am kind of a late bloomer when it comes to it. I actually didn't even pick it up for the first time until last year, I believe. And um, I quickly became just enthralled by it. I am typically not the kind of person who will play a game that could have me getting jump scared every five minutes. But something about the story to me was just so enticing and it really spoke to me. I feel like all of the characters in the game are complex and they're well-rounded. Um, I know that a lot of people weren't happy with where the second game went, but overall, despite my absolute disgust with Joel dying and um, Abby's subsequent behaviors and Ellie's spiral into whatever the hell she became, um, you know, overall, I still think that it was a good and probably pretty realistic take on complex trauma and grief. The next thing I decided to draw was a clicker because those things are just visually disgusting and full of like this crazy detail that I just could not wait to take a crack at drawing. So something I've been trying out lately is using different mediums on the same page or same sketchbook spread because I feel like it creates a more interesting composition. And so since I did Ellie in graphite, I decided to do the clicker in colored pencil and alcohol markers. For me, the clickers were probably like the freakiest part of the entire game. Um, Minus the Rat King in part two, which was absolute nightmare fuel. When I tell you I was screaming the entire time that thing chased me around, huh. But yeah, to me, the concept of a clicker is really intriguing. I mean, 
just a little view into what could potentially happen if something like this were possible in our world, being infected by a host that can take over your entire body and puppet you around is a really frightening thing to think about, and despite the uh, sick headgear that you get whenever you are infected, and uh, advance into clicker stage, I think that I'm gonna do like a hard pass on that. The cordyceps can take a couple steps back, if you know what I mean. Something interesting I realized in my latest playthrough of the game is that the clickers actually have like varying forms um, depending on their environment. So there are like these spring clickers, winter clickers, and desert clickers, and each one has like a unique coloration and I just think that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool detail. Anyways, I really liked the color of the spring clicker, so that is the color scheme that I went with for my drawing. Yeah, to sum up my process for this clicker drawing, I started out with the colored pencil sketch, I went in with alcohol markers to lay down my base color, I added a little more colored pencil on top for texture, and then here I'm going in with my highest and lowest points of contrast, and I really like to use this white paint pen for detail. I added like the creepy looking little spore hairs that you'll see here in a minute. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Here I am experiencing every color in the universe as I sip Vietnamese coffee to get ready for day three. Side note, if you've never had it before, Vietnamese coffee does not play around. When I tell you I unlocked and awakened every chakra in my body, I am not exaggerating, okay? Anyway, the next thing I decided to draw were the pins on Ellie's backpack. So the little button pins are from game one, and then the rocket ship and possibly aviation pin are from game two. So I finished the pins off camera, and the only one that was really giving me trouble was the aviation pin. I could not seem to get the wings to be exactly the same, and so I think, um, well I got a little angry, but um, I think that I discovered a hack maybe. I got some rice paper and traced my design, and then I rubbed it onto the opposite side, like transferred it, and that way I could match it up nearly perfectly, and it actually worked. So after I finished up the last pin, I decided the next thing I wanted to draw was Ellie's tattoo. Which, if you've played the game, you know is just a clever ruse to disguise her bite scar. Admittedly, I have some issues when it comes to permanence, um, but if I ever was going to get a work of art on my body that I couldn't take off, Ellie's tattoo would be a strong contender.
rounding out this spread, I decided that I would go in and use gouache as my last medium. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with gouache. I think it creates a beautiful end piece, but I have not quite mastered the timing or technique with gouache, and so I persist. In my previous gouache adventures, I was using the Himmy Jelly variety, but I've had these Arteza paints lying around for a while, and even though they intimidate me a little bit because they come in tubes and they're a little easier to waste, I decided to go with them over the Himmy because there are way more colors. The very last thing that I'll be adding to this spread is the iconic window is basically just the imagery that accompanies the main menu screen in game one. And there you have it, my finished sketchbook spread inspired by The Last of Us. Arguably one of the best games I've ever played, and I'm really happy that I now have something that pays homage to that. I added a little bit of distressing to make it look old and weathered, and overall I am super happy with how this turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. So I was bending down to get my colored pencils, and there was just a cookie on the ground. I don't even know how he got there.